most common mistakes that you see applicants make in the application process, either in the in the no longer paper, but the, the file or in the interview mm -hmm. part portion? Yeah, I always have such a tough time with this question, the mistakes people make. Um, just because when I read applications, I just don't think of things like that. But I think okay. an, a, an answer that I have had solid feedback on giving in the past that has helped people um, is this. A lot of students have asked me the question, hey, I work at a company that doesn't have a standard promotion structure. You know, you come in as an analyst, you get promoted to senior analyst, and you kind of move through the structure. They say, you know, it's a flat organization. I've been there for four years with no promotion. Like, how do I, what do I do? Are you going to think negatively on that? How do I communicate to you that it's a flat organization? And I say, let's flip the question and let's flip the answer. You don't have to communicate to me that it's a flat organization, but you're a different person now than when you walked in the door four years ago. I was like, so your resume needs to reflect that. Okay, fine. You don't have a different title, but you've learned different things. You've become a different person. So I encourage people to write resumes kind of like skills development ladders. It's not a great way to describe it, but it's the best way I've found that, you know, you come in and you know, A skill and B skill. And then the next year you learned this and you learned this and you took on this. And then the third year you're a different person. And having me follow your professional growth in that way, first of all, is more satisfying than following your title growth. And that can really help your application, right? Because you've grown, even though you haven't grown in title and we love to see it.